This is part two of Nutrition, Maternal and Infant Life Cycle, Chapter 16. This is Carrie Erickson. Where we left off with part one was right at this slide here, infancy as far as newborn breastfeeding. We talked about human milk is low in vitamin D. Breastfed babies need regular sun exposure or some supplemental vitamin D. For breastfed iron, or for breastfed infants, iron fortified foods need to be introduced by six months of age and formula fed infants should be given iron fortified formula. With alternative feeding, infant formula are based on either cow's milk or soy protein. Unmodified cow's milk is inappropriate for infants through the first year of life. And the FDA regulates the vitamin and mineral composition of infant formula to ensure the adequate infant nutrition is met. Okay, this is where we left off. Um, going on to the next slide. Breast milk or formula, how much is enough? It's easy to keep track of how much formula an infant has consumed, but what about the breastfed baby? Although you can't see how much breast milk a nursing infant is consuming, there are other ways to tell that a baby is getting enough to eat. An adequately fed newborn will breastfeed daily 8 to 12 times, wet at least 6 diapers, and have at least 3 loose colored stools each day in the first week of life. Making sure that a nurturing environment is important to the feeding of infants, no matter what the milk source is. Introduction of solid foods. Solid foods are introduced to the infant one at a time, usually beginning with iron fortified infant cereal. Potential allergens such as cow's milk, egg whites, and wheat should be delayed until the baby is 12 months old. Developmental markers such as head and body control and the absence of the extrusion reflex shows the readiness of solid foods. As far as the developmental readiness for solid foods, start healthy feeding guides. Usually baby rice cereal is started, then strained fruits, vegetables, and meats. Usually vegetables first because fruits are sweeter and meats usually want to wait until about eight months of age. And adding one food at a time waiting about three to four days in between each food to make sure that if there is any type of allergic reaction, you know exactly what the allergic reaction, what food it was to. Feeding problems during infancy. Colic, although troublesome to infant and caregivers, is not caused by diet. Iron deficiency anemia is common in infants who lack iron-rich foods. Infants are susceptible to dehydration, especially when diarrhea is there, and if it's prolonged. Failure to thrive describes an infant who is not growing well. Intervention may be required to correct feeding practices of the caregiver. And with failure to thrive, it actually shows the stages um, on figure 16.22 in your book. Usually, a lot of times, poverty food shor shortage, inappropriate food selection, improper formula preparation, giving low fat or skim milk, excessive consumption of juices, these can all lead to delayed developmental uh, cognitive skills, motor skills, and language skills. And um, if untreated, these, can, these effects basically are lifelong. Now they go through just some um, information throughout the book, promoting and supporting breastfeeding. It's the position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics that exclusive breastfeeding provide nutrition and health protection for the first six months of life. Um, the breastfeeding along with complementary foods for at least 12 months is the ideal feeding pattern for infants. Breastfeeding is also a public health strategy for improving infant and child health survival, improving maternal morbidity, controlling health costs, and conserving natural resources. Eating for two, pregnant women do not obtain adequate iron from diet alone and should follow current recommendations for iron supplementation during pregnancy. A pregnant woman only needs about 300 extra calories a day, so that whole saying as far as eating for two, um, usually excess weight will be a problem when including 
those extra calories, and those 300 extra calories a day should be for nutrient-dense foods. It says most pregnant women probably need folic acid supplements to meet increased requirements of pregnancy, and now they are including folic acid in with grains and cereals, which also is helping to prevent those neural tube defects. Energy yielding nutrients for infants to support growth protein needs per kilogram per body weight are higher in infancy than in any other life stage. The best diet for infants are high in fat and moder moderate in carbohydrates. Nutrition to prepare for pro before pregnancy. Um, ideally, the time to prepare is well before conception. A woman who has adequate nutrition stores, especially folic acid, is at a healthy weight, can reduce risk for maternal and fetal complications during pregnancy. In addition to a healthy diet, avoiding cigarettes, alcohol, and other drugs is important when contemplating pregnancy. Cow's milk and iron deficiency. The use of cow's milk for children younger than one year of age is a cause of iron deficiency. Cow's milk is low in iron and drinking milk can cause intestinal bleeding in infants before that year of age. The amount of iron in breast milk is low, but this iron is highly bioavailable. The American Dietetic Association, their key recommendations is women of childbearing age who may become pregnant eat foods high in heme iron and or consume iron rich plant foods or iron fortified foods with an enhancer of iron absorption such as vitamin C. So um, meat products, animal products to get your iron is your best sources. There are plant sources but including vitamin C helps to absorb that iron into the body. Women of childbearing age who may become pregnant and those in the first trimester of pregnancy should consume adequate synthetic folic acid from fortified foods or supplement, in addition to foods um, a folate from a berry diet. There again, your grains and cereals have now been fortified with folic acid, which helps to um, which helps to prevent those spinal bifida and neural tube defects with pregnancy. Weight during pregnancy, maternal obesity can complicate pregnancy and delivery and may compromise a baby's health. Being too thin carries its own risk. Lean women that are too thin with a BMI of less than 20, they have an increased risk of preterm delivery and delivering a low birth weight um, infant. Also weight during pregnancy, overweight and obese women, they have an increased risk of several problems that includes preterm delivery and stillbirth. In addition, obese women are at a higher risk for high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, prolonged labor, unplanned cesarean section, and difficulty initiating and continuing breastfeeding. This concludes Chapter 16, The Life Cycle, Maternal and Infant Nutrition.